so students today we will be doing or we will be studying the postulates of quantum mechanics so here are some postulates that I have written down I will one by one explain these postulates see the state of a particle is represented by its wave function psi the wave function is given as psi which is a function of position and time I'll, I'll tell you more about psi but for the time being it's a, a mathematical object psi which tells you the state of a particle remember in statistical mechanics I told you the state of a particle is given by its position and momentum in quantum mechanics all the information about the particle is contained inside psi so if you want to know the state of a particle all you need to specify is in quantum mechanics is its wave function psi now there are some properties of psi I'll come to the physics of psi in a moment but for the time being please consider psi as a mathematical object which tells you about the state of a particle now some properties of psi in order for psi to represent the state of a particle it must have some properties psi since it is a mathematical object is it must be single valued continuous and differentiable within the region of interest so a mathematical function it must be single valued it must be continuous and it must be differentiable in the region of interest now what do i mean by single valued continuous and differentiable you know what differentiable means it must be differentiable within the region of interest now sing again it must be continuous there must be no discontinuity and it must be single valued before explaining these properties another property which is very much important is psi must be normalizable that is you see this is a very very important property the triple integration from minus infinity to plus infinity mod of psi square dv where dv is the elemental volume element must be equal to 1 for three dimensional case similarly if I extend the analogy for one dimensional case you may write mod of psi square dx in this case it was dv the elemental volume in this case it is dx the elemental length say for example in the x direction and only one integration minus infinity to plus infinity must be equal to 1 this is called the normalization condition this is called the normalization condition every psi which represents a particle must satisfy this normalization condition remember this is very 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 important where mod of psi square which I have written over here is psi star psi where psi star remember psi can be a complex quantity the state of a particle which is represented by the wave function this wave function can be a complex quantity so mod of psi square you remember mod of a complex number square is its complex conjugate into uh, the complex number itself so mod of psi square is psi star psi and what does this mod of psi square represent so mod of psi square represents the probability density what do I mean by the probability density see if I ask you what is the probability of finding the particle within a small volume dv I repeat if I ask you the probability of finding the particle within dv then your answer would be it is mod of psi square dv please understand this the probability of finding the particle 
within a small volume dv let's say this is the small volume dv and i ask you what is the probability of finding the particle remember quantum mechanics is probabilistic in nature you cannot be certain we discussed it in the class you cannot be certain or you cannot guarantee that the particle will be found in this small volume dv so we can only talk in terms of probability so the probability of finding the particle within a small volume dv let us say is given by mod of psi squared dv so in order to find out the probability you need psi the wave function or in other words it is psi star psi dv because mod of psi square is psi star psi so the probability of finding the particle within dv small volume dv is mod of psi square dv please understand probability is this if the particle can exist only in one dimension then it will be mod of psi square dx this is in one dimension and this is in three dimension so the probability of finding the particle within a small volume dv is given by this so mod of psi square is the probability density that is probability of finding the particle per unit volume so probability of finding the particle per unit volume is mod of psi square so in other words what mod of psi square represents is mod of psi square represents what is the what is the probability of finding the particle per unit volume is it okay so coming back to this you see again the integrand in this equation the normalization equation is mod of psi square dv so this is the probability of finding the particle within a small volume dv so if i integrate over all space then this must represent the total probability of finding the particle which must be 100% so this normalization condition represents the particles got to be somewhere in space so maybe here the probability of finding the particle is 20% so maybe here the probability of finding the particle is 50% maybe here the probability of finding the particle is 10% so if you add all the probability so the part probability of finding the particle over here is maximum let us say but it can also be over here it can also be over here so for every dv this represents the probability of finding the particle so if you add all the probabilities the total probability of finding the particle must be 100% and that is equal to 1 so this is in three dimensional case and this is in one dimensional case if the particle can exist in in only a line let us say along the x axis so this is the probability of finding the particle within a small length dx so if you add all the probabilities in other words if you integrate it you must get a total probability of 1 because the particles got to be somewhere in the universe so this is the normalization condition which is very very important so any psi which represents the state of a particle the wave function must satisfy the normalization condition so if it satisfies the normalization condition that means mod of psi square represents the probability of finding the particle per unit volume or per unit length as the case may be so if it represents the probability now coming to the second point psi must be single valued continuous and differentiable definitely the probabilities must be continuous it must be differentiable and it must be single valued what do i mean by single valued at a single point in space psi cannot have more than one value so for example at a particular point in space let's say i talk about this point in space I tell psi is 50% and also 20%. This is physically not possible because psi mod of psi square represents the probability of finding the particle. So <clears throat> psi must be single valued at a particular point. So for one point in space, psi must have a single value because mod of psi square represents the probability of finding that particle at that particular point in space so for a particular point in space psi must have a single value and definitely it has to be continuous it cannot be discontinuous because if it is discontinuous 
then again it will have more than one values at a particular point so it must be continuous it must be differentiable and it must be single valued so for psi to define the state of a particle it must satisfy these conditions it must be single valued continuous and differentiable within the region of interest and it must be normalizable by which mathematically we mean this that the total probability of finding the particle must be one so next point fourth postulate every observable in quantum mechanics has a corresponding operator now what do i mean by an observable observable is something which can be measured which can be observed like the position like momentum like energy like angular momentum all these are observable quantities which can be measured so every observable quantity like position momentum energy and all they have a corresponding operator in quantum mechanics now why do we need before going uh, to the mathematics of this <clears throat> let us understand why do we need operators in quantum mechanics now please understand in classical mechanics when we discussed in class even if we don't measure the position of a particle it doesn't matter the position is there i mean even if i do not look at an electron even if i don't observe an electron the electron has a certain position the electron has a certain energy the electron has a certain momentum that is that is what is said in classical mechanics it is immaterial whether i observe the particle or i not do not observe it but in quantum mechanics things changes when we disturb the system so for example the the electron has a wave function like this before measuring so the probability of finding the electron is maximum over here but you cannot say that the electron is over here the electron can be over here also can be over here also with lower probabilities of course but there is a probability that the electron can be found over here 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 or anywhere so this is the wave function let us say this is the psi of the electron this is the wave function of the electron mod of this square represents the probability of finding the electron so this is the point let us say this is x axis so this is the point on the x axis where the probability of finding the electron is maximum fine now if we measure it then let us say a person measures it and finds the electron right over here to that particle the electron behaves or to that person the electron behaves as a particle it has a particular position but that does not mean that the electron had this position prior to the act of measurement so the observable quantity that is in this case x position of the particle say for example a person a measures the position of the electron and this person finds the position to be this this so this is the value of the observable that this person a gets out from the measurement point of view so this person a measures the position and then gets the value of x so it is not that the electron had this position value prior to the measurement it only had this position value after you have measured it so this observable which is this the position because you can observe it this position value is the observable it is only there because you have operated something on the electron in this case let us see let us say that you have seen the electron for example through a microscope or whatever may be say for example you have a microscope which can see electrons so you have seen the electron so this act of observation of yours has made the electron collapse to a certain position in space and given you the value so you see that this observable only has a significance because you have measured it 
prior to the act of measurement no one knows where the electron is all we know is the wave function of the electron that's it that the probability of finding the electron is maximum the probability of finding the electron is low over here the probability of finding the electron is low over here again we have a certain probability that is all size tells you but you cannot say that the electron is over here you can say the electron is over here after the measurement so you have operated something on psi that is the wave function of the electron and only after that you have got the value of the observable so the observable only has a significance only after the act of measurement that is after a certain operator has operated on the electron in this case the operator is let's say you're looking at the electron this is your operator this is the operator you are looking at the electron so you have operated on the electron and by operating on the electron you have got a value x but remember in classical mechanics whether you see the electron whether you observe the electron or not the electron has got a position x every time whether you irrespective of a measurement whether you see it or you do not see it it has x so there is no need of an operation electron has x this is a property of that system it has a position it has a momentum it has an angular momentum whether you observe it or not doesn't matter but in quantum mechanics the observable only comes out after you operate it with an operator so the concept of operator is very very important in quantum mechanics so you see every observable in quantum mechanics has a corresponding operator so operators in quantum mechanics is given by a capital letter with a hat over it so a is an operator and definitely an operator needs to be operated on something so it operates on psi let us say that is the state of the particle and by operating on psi you will get a value a and psi remains so in this case you have operated on psi that is you have looked at the electron so that is your operator looking at the electron is the operator and you have looked at the electron so you have looked at psi and after looking at that electron you got a value of the position x so you see this is the value that you got after the measurement this is the act of measurement this is the measurement process operator so you are operating on the system and by operating on the system you get a value of that operator so if you are seeing the electron you if you are seeking for the position so this will become the position operator and this will become the position value if you are seeking the momentum then this becomes the momentum operator on psi and the value that will come out after you are looking for the momentum is the value of the momentum so this is the value of the momentum this is the value of the momentum or whatever observable quantity that you are measuring you are you are measuring the energy so this is the energy operator you're looking for the energy so you operate psi with the energy operator and what you'll get out is the value for energy so this is the value that you get out so if remember if the operator does not change the wave function you can see prior to the measurement the wave function was psi and even after the measurement you've got the value after the measurement the wave function is psi if this is the case then psi is called the eigen function of this operator so remember psi is the eigen function of this operator a and a is the small a letter a is the eigen value that you got out of the experiment this is only true if psi does not change with the operation of a so you operate on a state and you do not change the state and you still get out a value then this state this state is the eigen function or the eigen state of this operator a and the value that you get is the eigen value of this operator i'll give you some examples so for example let us say let us say you have psi as let us say you have psi as cos x let us say you operate you operate d dx 
on psi see what you get is you get a minus of sin x so by operating d dx on psi that is d d x of cos x you get a minus sin x so you see you do not get back psi so cos x is not an eigen function of d dx since you have changed it but if you double differentiate it for example i tell you this is the operator d square dx square of cos of x then what you get is you get a minus of cos of x you see you differentiated one you'll get a sin x and you again differentiate it you'll get minus sin x and again you differentiate it you will get a cos x so there is a minus of cos x so you get psi back so d square dx square psi in this case where this is psi is minus of psi so you are getting psi back so operating this operator on psi is not disturbing psi you are getting psi back after the measurement so psi that is cos x in this case is an eigen function of d square dx square operator and minus 1 is the eigen value a that i was talking about so if you have psi as cos x then d square dx square is an operator if you operate it on psi that is cos of x you'll get a minus of cos of x so you do not change psi you get back psi after this operation so psi is an eigenfunction of d square dx square with an eigenvalue of minus one with an eigenvalue of minus one but cos of x is not an eigenfunction of d dx because it does not retain psi after the operation you have a minus of sin x you do not have a cos x another example you say you have psi is e to the power of for example a x if i differentiate again psi with respect to x what i get is a e a x which is i can write a psi so you have this operator so you see if this is psi then definitely you get back this psi you get back this psi after this operation d dx so psi if it is e to the power of a a x is an eigen function of d dx with an eigen value of a so every observable in quantum mechanics has a corresponding operator so this operator is given by this with a hat capital letter psi and if it retains psi then psi is the eigen function of this operator and the value that you get is the eigen value a last postulate the expectation value of an observable is given by this a is an observable say position momentum energy or whatever it may be the expectation value of that observable is given by this equation please first understand this mathematically then i'll try to explain how we got to this result first of all this represents the average value of this observable so for example you are measuring the position of an electron so a represents the position first understand what we need what needs to be done mathematically so a represents the position x let's say the electron can move only along x so a is the position x so the average value of the position of the electron is mathematically given as in one dimensional of course is given by psi star a hat psi dx and integration over all space now this a hat is the operator corresponding to this observable in the previous postulate we saw that every observable has a corresponding operator so whatever observable expectation value or average value that you are trying to find out 
it must have an operator corresponding to it so a is the operator so cor corresponding to this observable so mathematically what you need to do is you must sandwich this operator between psi star and psi and integrate within proper limits this is what you what needs to be done mathematically we'll understand this physically but please understand what you need to do mathematically and this equation is very very important in problem solving you will do a lot of problems where you need to find out expectation values so please this result is very very important so if you are trying to find out the average value of position what you need to do is take the position operator sandwich it between psi and psi star and integrate within proper limits now please understand these are not multiplication you are not multiplying a with psi you are operating a on psi so what do you need to what you need to do is first operate a on psi you will get a value and then you can multiply it with psi star so please do not think that these are multiplications these are not multiplications this is an operator and this is where this operator operates so first operate this operator on this you will get so if you operate this on this you'll get a value now this is a value and psi back so this is a value a and psi back and then you can multiply and then integrate so we'll do problems so we'll do problems on this so <clears throat> no need to worry about but please understand what this means and why physically this first understand why expectation value of an observable as i told you let's say this is the wave function of an electron and i give n number of copies of this electron to n number of students every student will measure the position of the electron differently and remember nobody is doing a mistake because the electron is at different places simultaneously it is behaving as a wave unless and until it is measured you remember this from the class so each and every person measures the position of the electron differently so if each and every person measures it differently what i need to know is what is the average value of the electron's position so this is what i look for the average value of any observable quantity because if you take n number of copies maybe each copy will each each observable observation will give you a different result so what i need to know is what is the average value or the expectation value of that observable and why is this so because i'll explain it in this page so for example so so expectation of a any observable i have written it as minus infinity to plus infinity psi star a hat psi dx in one dimension so please break it up what you have is this a hat operating on psi and we know that a hat operating on psi a hat operating on psi will give me the value a and psi if psi is an eigen value of a operator so it will give me a psi now remember this is a value this is no longer an operator so i can shift this so i can write this expectation as minus infinity to plus infinity a psi star psi dx now remember what is this psi star psi dx if you see this psi star psi dx psi star psi dx i told you is the probability of finding the particle within dx so psi star psi dx this represents probability of finding within dx so this represents the probability and this is the value a so <clears throat> probability of getting a value a so the value into its probability integrating it over all space is giving me the average value of this number now i'll give you an analogy though this analogy is is very basic or will be very basic but it will help you understand why is this the average value again 
for example marks and number of students who got this these marks let's say 70 is the mark and six students got 70 again 80 five students got 80 and 90 marks four students got 90 so if I ask you what is the average marks of the class the average marks you see again I'm using this average marks of the class is 70 into 6 plus 80 into 5 plus 90 into 4 divided by 15 total number of students so what I have is I have 70 into 6 by 15 plus 80 into 5 by 15 plus I can put brackets over here plus 90 into 4 by 15 so you see the average marks of the class can be written like this though this is a very basic explanation 70 is the marks 6 by 15 6 by 15 is the probability that a student has got 70 because total num number of students who has got 70 is 6 6 and the total number of students is 15 so this is the probability that a student has got 70 so marks into its probability plus next marks 80 into its probability plus next mark 90 into its probability this gives me the average marks again average value of this observable quantity is a particular observable particular value into its probability integration means again summation the next observable into its probability so you add up all of them and you get the average observable value so the expectation value of an observable is given by this so the average value of any measurement so say suppose you are measuring uh, position n number of times so the average position will be given by this you just need to sandwich that particular operator the position operator in that case between psi star and psi and integrate let's say you are finding the average value of momentum then a will be the momentum operator sandwich between psi star and psi and integrate you are trying to find out the av expect average value of energy then this will be the energy operator sandwich between psi star and psi and integrate right next class we'll be discussing some useful operators in quantum mechanics.